Hi all, my name is Dr. Paresh Naik. I am endoscopic skull based surgeon. Today we have a 52 year old female who presented with headache and right sided water dis watery discharge from the nose. So this was happening since many months and she also had one episode of meningitis which she was treated. Uh, there were investigations done and she underwent radiological investigation as well. What you can see or I will jump to conclusion this is a case of IIH that is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So this idiopathic intracranial hypertension how it is diagnosed it is diagnosed based on modified dandy criteria among which include clinical signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure patient usually has headaches visual disturbances the CSF opening pressure is more than 25 centimeter of H2O and we do obviously have the features of IIH on MRI which can be as I will mention so looking at the images let's look at the coronal section we all like coronal section i am using horos h o r o s uh, imaging system where i read the files we're looking at the coronal section and on coronal what we can see as i proceed further that's the septum now remember water is white on t2 so the vitreous is white in color as we proceed from anterior to posterior we can start seeing the CSF in the brain which is hyper intense there is mild deviated septum the turbinate on the left side is enlarged and the right side this will help us to plan the surgery analyze and think how we can proceed as we proceed further on the right maxillary sinus you can see hyper intensity this can be the CSF leak now proceeding further posteriorly this is the ideal site of CSF the cribriform now this is the thing that can happen in patients who have got CSF which is on and off when they are going in the scanner machine many times they do not have the leak so we might miss out so ideally speaking this should be a leak coming out but the patient did not have but as this patient was in lying down position the dependent part of the sinus is hyper intense you can see hyper intensity and this is the most common site of the leak so surgical management will have to clear all this area and we will have to cover this many times we can go this interceptum we have to remove it and make a continuous one big patch as we proceed posteriorly the thing that I would like to show you is this so this is the spinoid okay as soon as we enter the spinoid we start seeing cella can you see this hyper intensity in cella the whole cella is filled with CSF okay that means this is an empty cella so IIH patient this is one of the criteria on MRI we won't see a picture it is empty cella let me show you on sagittal section it's, it's a uh, reconstituted image so we won't get a clear view but what you can see at the same level is this is where we are expecting the leak in the cribriform. form that's the spinoid that's the cella cella tachysa and in cella you can see the hyper intensity it's completely filled with CSF okay see this completely filled with CSF the real question is 
will this patients require lumbar drain or not my answer is yes as per my experience they will require because over a period of years they have been having increased csf production so after we seal this leak they will have very bad headaches and we need to get it of that now can you see this hyper intensity that's where we are expecting the csf that it might have trickled down and settled posteriorly i will soon post a video of surgery for the same please write down in your comments whether will you prefer using lumbar drain in such kind of cases and what are different ways you would like to manage thank you for listening